Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 3 of this little Songtian mini-series in which we plan on going to war against the Chuban Kaganate, even though they're already at war with our overlord. Uh, well, to be exact, they started this war just to take uh, charge of this uh, little area. And since it's a, uh, a tributary to the uh, Templite Empire, um, they are intervening on this matter and... Um, and now they're being outnumbered as they're making advances. I mean, there's ways that they'll win the war. They'll either be beaten so bad and uh, taking some of the other clan holdings. And if they fail to take any part of their holdings, then the war score would be in the Allies' favor. But as for us, all we could do is just wait and relax. While we will continue to build uh, troops from our domain, even though it's mostly going to be coming from Bakara right now, but... There could be a potential revolt, which... Which I could, um, send the... My spot over there. As we have a habit of training troops, but it's already full, so there's no reason to do that. Sometimes I forget to do this option to suppress revolts. That's why I kind of had to struggle with it in the next episode. And I just wait for the inevitable. But then again, when I get pessimistic, I tend to be narrow-minded. So yeah. What else? What is this month of January? Well, it's not no rose yet. But I can tell you this, even though we do have a mission, and that is to um, build a warehouse. But I'm going to be using that money for something else. Like this Sogdian Fair. But let's just wait at least, oh, how about May? How does May sound? And as a reminder, I'm a man with appalling intrigue. But I barely have the diplomacy, but the Nero's thing would expire, unfortunately. Thus, the general opinion will go away once again. My son's getting sicker and, and sicker. We'll see what kind of illness he has. I mean, it does change over time, you know. Oh, it's a flu, but it's a mild illness. Just call him, give him a good treatment. Good. Who's that? As Scythian paganism. That's our religion. We have an ancient Iranian people. Um, who dominated Central Asia and the Pontic Capsian steppe in Eastern Europe throughout a classical antiquity. While little is known of the religion, drawn from the work of a 5th century Greek historian and ethnographer Herodotus. Scythian religion is soon to be related to the earlier Proto Indo Iranian religions and to have influenced later Slavic, Hungarian, and Turkic mythologies, as well as some contemporary Eastern Iranian and Ossetian traditions. My god is Tabeti. The other gods include Agun, Tabeti, Papayos, Api, Otosurios, Argim Pasa, Thagim Masedas, and Ohuramasa. And their evil god name is the Dark Spirits. It's a pagan fight. I don't know if it's a good idea if I wish to take her in his concubineness. She already has a child. Hey, what you got there? I was about to say, no, wait. You can't abduct, you can't, well, you can't abduct unless I'm a certain something. And subsequently, I cannot, um, oh, what is it? I'm drawing a blank again. Cannot invite him to court, though I could, but it's going to cost you money. And plus, he dislikes me. And also, he's a married man. So where 
where do you come from? Guess over there. It's mainly a var area. Where do the Yazagis come from? Ah, there they are. So they come from a land far away from here. In modern day parts of Hungary and Slovakia, for reference. And if you're wondering where the Slavic people are, there they are. Slavic culture, Slavic faith. Now you know who's who. And uh, sorry, I got a little distracted with a slight hesitation while I was looking around in Eastern Europe. Because, um, oh, I'm just going to say this real quick, um, it, which is off topic. There's this, um, well, model that I uh, just uh, follow on Instagram. Again, it's a personal thing. Um, yeah, a Polish model, and uh, she liked one of my photos. So, thank you. Highly appreciate that. And no, she doesn't watch my videos. Nobody has time for that. Unless it's you people who are watching that do have time to watch these sort of videos. So, I thank you for it. Unless some of you viewers are of a Zoroastrian faith or Iranian culture like Tajik, for example. Because I know a Tajik subscriber that has watched my old Sogdian Saga series. And I hope you're watching this, so... I mean, if you are watching it, Salom! Which is greetings, by the way, in case you people forget. Anyways, wait till the month of May, because I'm gonna hold a Sogdian Fair. But first, I've been toying with the idea of using great fighting capabilities of the migrants to create a military group to enforce security in the province. Placing the general population under the supervision of the migrants. This could have good results in the near term regarding proud stability. The That's an interesting thing. I am not a social engineer. Social engineer. I mean, after all, it's a restless province, and if we get rid of that, at least it'll reduce the risk. I will do it! Even though the population will be resented. They'll give us less levies, they'll pay less tax to us, and lower supply money. Again, Kotal is an unruly place. But it's better than restlessness. Got blasted. Now oh, here we are, month for May. How's the war going? The Allies are winning. They took the, this area. When they take this camp, of happy memory, of Korean War. Oh, well that's for the Easterns, and another tongue of an unbeliever. I see. So they need to take this area, and then one more, and you win. And then it's going to be my turn to take Balasagun in order to unite Sogdiana. And before we even think about uniting Sogdiana, let's hold another Sogdian fair. We're going to hold a different type of fair because I have a limited time on Earth. Remember, on the last episode we did a Mach fair. And that option is no longer there, which it will be an option again when the next ruler takes over. Or in this case, elected, since we run an elective monarchy. We will have a, um, let's see, the Tirma Fair is the one with defective goods. It can be sold in the name of good fun. And there's a Machfe Fair, where stolen or counterfeit things are sold, obviously the stolen goods are part of the fun tradition rather than actual theft. Let's do this fair. <laughs> Again, we're just passing the time and we want to have good fun. And because I'm willing to spend a bit of the money. Once we unite Sogdiana, I'll take my full focus on these activities. 
while my son continues on as a apprentice trader in the trade league, which he has not advanced in rank. If he did, he would no longer be my apprentice. I would know that. Trust me, I have prior experience. And after we form the kingdom of Sogdiana, these two will be coming in. Because these are traditionally Sogdian land. And Forgana to a degree, but I can't do anything about that. Although I would love to have personal control over Ursana. Anyways. It'll be two months, this coming July, we will have the fair where those stolen goods would be sold in fun. It's not a fence where, you know, thieves sell their stolen goods. But there's the appalling diplomacy now. <sighs> Took a drink. Fair and summer can is officially underway. Merchants from all over the Silk Road have come to peddle their wares, trade their goods, and exchange contacts and information. Even those who aren't merchants, either commoners or nobles, can do some shopping or enjoy some of the festivities. The silk must flow. Which, by the way, China still has its doors closed to the Silk Road, as there's still unrest here. The Silk Road may be closed, but here... In Sogdia, we are open for business. So it'll reduce the revolt risk a little, which there isn't any to begin with. But the local tax modifier is actually larger than normal for this type of fare. Again, sell stolen goods in the name of good fun. Just don't buy any fakes, otherwise you'll be full too. Oh, who's that? Tervevex shed the vacuum and the samakan. I have a right to ask you permission to give my ward, Nana, a proper hatap light I'm bringing from other ways has got this. Didn't I already sent you there? Yes. He's asking for to focus on faith. To uh, worship the hatap light faith, which is slightly different Mazdan faith. The similarities between Kormazta and uh, so, uh, go ahead, because if I were to tell her, tell her to say no, he might get mad at me, and I would much prefer to improve relations. So that way I may cooperate, and we're going to need his help when we take on Chuban together. We'll say yes. No, I'm going to need some uh, diplomacy increase. A thief has been brought before me. Although people are supposedly allowed to steal and sell their stolen products at the uh, fair. This is in fact just a game. Friends and family play with each other. Real theft is not acceptable. But it happens from time to time. With lowly ruffians thinking they could take advantage of this atmosphere. Hey. Punish the thief. Hey, you picked up the just trait. But please remember, since you have the limit of five, yes, five traits, so you got it. Oh no, that's not, that's for stewardship, not, learn, not diplomacy. Should have picked trusting, but it would have had a much lower chance. But it was a lucky chance. That means more stewardship. Hey, does that mean... Yes. Yes, we can. We can organize a smuggler operation. <laughs> but we need to raise more funds first, if you want to establish a smuggler's operation. What the heck is... They hold no land, but apparently they came from Gupta. They're on the move. They're nomadic. 
Hindus, Sanskrit culture, which means, yes, they are from Gupta Empire. Vaisha caste. They're just on the way. Ah, so that's where they came from. They came from here. Which is taken over by the, uh, the Guru of Gaya. Traditionally Buddhist area, but it's wholly Hindu. But the countryside is mainly Ajavika. Well, don't raid us. Just keep going along your way, wherever you're going. Talking with some of the merchants who have traveled from faraway lands to our fair to, has proven to be quite fascinating. Many of these men have seen so many in these travels. I sometimes wonder if I ever get to see the massive Buddhist statues of Bamiyan, the cave of a thousand Buddhas of Mogao, the Great Wall of China, or the highest of peaks of the Himalayas. Maybe someday. I am dreaming of the Silk Road, which adds a little bit more monthly tax modifier. Of course, it's the food time. The best part of these fairs is obviously the food. Since people uh, come from all across the Silk Road, there are a lot of different cuisines. There's boiled meats and vegetables, as well as flatbreads, puff, nutty, syrupy sweets, of course. There are also more exotic dishes like Chinese noodles, Indian curries, and Greek baklava. I have plenty of time to try them all. So today, I'll first try some... Uh, Gee, they, all these food are rich in carbs, but I had kebabs last time. Give me some more kebabs. Just increase the martial a bit. Just to uh, improve our country's strength. But unfortunately, the fair at Samarkand has come to an end. Merchants are leaving elsewhere on the Silk Road. It'll be a while before a game of this magnitude will be held again. But I haven't got a chance for this many. I didn't even spend that much money. But thank you. Where are they? Karak. Well, we need more money, so a smuggler's operation will do us good. So, I'll decide to go ahead with the set up a smuggler's ring with the help of my spy master. The success is not guaranteed, Oliver. Right. This will depend on your intrigue education, which I don't got. I'm not a master schemer. But, I am deceitful, and I am greedy, and I am brave. Well, there you go. There's some positives. Anything is the opposite, but, oh, me being just also reduces it. And as my spy master said to me, the stewardship skill also plays a role. I don't know about you. But, let's give it a try. Oh, where is it? Actually, we'll know about it at a later time. For now, I'll just save your money on the upcoming Noros next year. Fish Toss has his favorite toys missing. He won't go to bed without it. Might have thrown out today while I was tying up. I offered to buy a new one. My offer to purchase new toy was rejected by Miss Toss. He's upset I really suggest such a thing. Always happens. Concubines are pregnant. As the days pass, I notice my spouse has become more and more listless. Things that used to amuse her no longer have the same effect. The seeing with a long face has become a daily occurrence. Some of my courtiers have been overheard discussing on the unseemly state of my wife, which has finally prompted me to act. How shall I approach this problem? Oh, this isn't going to work. 
and ordered my wife to meet me in a private study in the evening, hours upon hours. I spent speaking at length about the problems that plagued her mind. Alas, there were too many for me to listen to, and the only things I've seen that have gone were sore ears. My ears are sore, but I achieved nothing. Not no longer rebellious, but now it's reduced to restless for Bukhara. And of course, my Bozog Famada is looking for an artifact. Send him on a search, so that's where some of that money went. Because we're spending our money to finance the guy's search for the artifact. While meanwhile, we're trying to establish a smuggler ring. Success. After months of planning the whole smuggler operation and contacting shady individuals, Asiya reported the smuggler's ring is up in operation abroad. Excellent. It's an average smuggler operation. If I wasn't just, it would have been a big improvement. But it'll do. Big time. We, we, instead of two a month, now it's four a month. Hey, I told you, we Sogdians are a resourceful bunch. There's the enemy army. Now they're going straight after him. Well, we better hurry up and start that war sooner or later, because soon as help will fail them, and the uh, and the alliance will be broken up. But I need no rules to come sooner or later. Sometimes I wonder how people of the other gender urinate. I mean, I know where it comes out of. I'm not a child. I'm aware of these things, but I'm talking about how they do it. For instance, do they stand up? How do they aim it? Does it come out at a different speed? Such important questions. Oh, damn it. That lower diplomacy, because you are thinking like a silly person. He's a naval gazer. I would even write a book about it, if I had the money. What's the meaning of life? Huh. I ought to go sell linen. It's up here, you dummy. Okay, the man rushes to be talking sadly, insisting that to sell this. I don't really understand what he wants to miss his rambling. Deal? I did say I was going to sell linen, but we got it. Not holding another fair. Save the money for either the next Noros if it's available. Or um or um mercenaries. Anything to do with the phones. Anyways. My uh, daughter in law has dragged around faithful spouse uh Rudvad before me and says I should punish him. Unfaithful. Gonna really do that to my son? But since I am just, I'll say a couple of days in the dungeon will do him good. Shall be grateful the issues take care of. You know he's my apprentice, right? Oh, you're a big damn failure in your job. There's other potential candidates, but they're not adults yet. My half sister doesn't have what it takes to run the country. It's too soon to name my other son. 
who is a child of a concubine, which is diplomacy, isn't good. But he's willful and affectionate. Although imprisoning him would be just that. What's his opinion? 53. Ah, he'll be talking to Stock instead. The polling diplomacy is no longer affecting us. Because I am just. You see? At least for a while. This itch is really bothersome. I can't stop scratching it. I look like a fool in front of my court. There goes one prestige. Oh yes, the king of kings of the Hatap Light. Who is still depressed, but he still let wool. I hope we can get along. Okay, he's coming. It's been a few days. Let's see if we can call up or something. I try my best to be concerned with Dormana, but we simply couldn't come to agreement about the privilege of good education that the comfort comes from examining the kind of idea. No! You are wrong! Damn it! This way is never gonna work. A group of craftsmen has come to the court and shut off their work. They present me with fine goods, which I'm sure there would be a demand for them. Noticing my interest, the craftsman asks for some capital to start up a workshop, saying they lack the funds to do it on their own. No, your lack of funds is not my problem. Yeah, we're never going to get along. Well, at least try these options. Start rebuilding a relationship. The cheapest mercenaries that money can buy. Which we know it's... It's, um... It's them, but it's currently being used by the Gungus Kingdom. The other alternative is, well, you might as well extort subjects and that'll make you look like a tyrant, which that's the last thing I ever want to be called. And since you got some trade goods, alternatively, take some loans. And I'll repay the loan in future. They've taken their relevant objective. This is not good. I mean, it'd be all for nothing. We gotta do this. Liberate for Ghana. With Kashgar's help. We can't wait anymore. I don't think mercenaries would be enough unless I were to just just look at it for once. It's triple taxation here. Peasants of Samarkand did as expected, um, did not appreciate the extra tax we forced upon them. The peasants even elected a leader amongst them who started asking questions, why was this tax necessary? I exclaimed that they would not have to starve. Perhaps something would be done before they get to pitchforks. Eek. For five years? 
Explain how this tax is necessary and give them a temporary tax relief. Yeah, that's definitely gonna hurt the economy here, but it's for the best. Kashka will be coming to assist us. Let's see our grandson. Devastus. Or the alternate spelling is Devaste. Devastus. An actual known his historical Sogdian individual. So you and I are going to have to get along one day. This is our only hope. Get this area. It's another child of a concubine. For which I care less. Oh, what this? Well, it looks like the old man croaked. One of the clans is split. Actually, hold on. This is independent. There's Chuban. They're still part of that war, man. They're about to take that territory. Ha, he who laughs, laughs, laughs longest. Finally, that vile coward, um, Kaganak had left this fine earth. Well, everything will be definitely better without him. I have a lot of extra time on my hands now. There's no room for our kind, but I do think a skull would look fine on my mantle place. Now it's rebellious again. Because of an ongoing conflict. I've just separated the Kagat's head from his body when the door is thrown open by Sorga Nathani. Or oh, I had a chance to explain herself. She calls for the guards and I am thrown out. Head first. It's not what it looks like. I'm a grave robber. Alright, head tap flights. Take it to him. Yep, they're losing it here. I'll order the allies to come over here. You shouldn't go veering off that way. You should support us. Okay, we won't get any territories, but... At least as long as I'm around with the organized tree, we'll make a move faster. And once this war is over, we will hold the Terma Fair. But Chuban holds the objective. But they'll come to liberate that area, we hope. Big setback. We got no time for setbacks. Have to appoint somebody else to do the damn job. You'll do. You search for it. More linen thoughts. When I met the peasant leaders of Bakar, I was able to hear their complaints and form their opinion on their requests. Then I used my best judgment to succeed on their just appeals. I never allowed my position of power, blurred my thought, 
but I was also adamant with my decisions against void complaints. Eating and everyone was blessed with my sense of justice. Thus, things tend to improve. Now it's back to being, uh, restless. But it's thanks to the high stewardship that I have. Because I'm just. And this is what Sogdia needs. People deserve respect and just. They deserve respect and justice. And we demand it. Then don't get on my bad side. Because you may never know what kind of person I am. October 8th, November 6th. They will engage him soon. Again, we, tank, we can't take this holding. But our ally has, um... Don't even know what their war is like. But if we were to take two of these areas, which is quite far away from here, should go in after. They're engaging them now. Oh, stop! We will have friendly reinforcements to back us up. This is gonna hurt. In fact, I'll probably switch my focus back to war right now. Not because of my old age of personal combat. Oh, it's too late for that. And they're gonna be here next month. Yeah. Go get the mercenaries. The cheapest that you could find. These guys. They got pikes, which is anti cavalry. They'll have to get up here to reinforce us. Based on the amount of casualties that will take. Oh, they got better commanders. Because that man is a commander. And this other one, who by the way is Manichaean, um, is an adventurer. And he's a brilliant strategist. They could potentially defeat us. The leader of the migrants approached me one day in order to offer so by sharing some knowledge they have of our sages, they expect an improvement in the relation to our peoples and want nothing more for it. I accept the offer. Thanks to his connections, none of them, my Bozo Gramadar, came to me recently to the idea to reinforce our troops with foreign recruits. The plan is to send an envoy asking for help from his acquaintance, Kosas Chenpanand, and check what he's going to ask to help us. Go ahead with the plan. Not good, not good. Get out of there. No, no, no. Retreat to Fergana. Immediately. I am not liking where this is going. I'm retreating from battle right now. a comeback because we're gonna get mercenaries and and some migrant troops that are living in Kuta. Let me teach you son about Asha righteousness for more learning or you won't have the intrigue. They're on standby. Perhaps it's because of our poor relations with Cossus 
perhaps of our greed. Um, because, perhaps because of some other known fact, my Bozo Kwamadad returned from meeting with a harsh proposal to receive a host of soldiers. We have a long list of demands to satisfy before we can have access to foreign soldiers. Trade route? For ten years? No! Unacceptable. But I'll adopt your idea on how to improve the economy. Okay, they've taken our capital. This is our chance to capture it, since they have very little garrison. But this time we have backup. In a big way. Avenge this defeat. Our flank already. If we can't defeat the combined forces, then we would be in a bad way. There's a temporary law in the fighting. A moment of peace. I find a small corner on the battlefield to rest for a few moments. I decide to offer a short prayer to Weshpaka. Moments later, I return to the fray, swinging my weapon at the enemy. May Weshpaka have mercy on you, because I won't. Unacceptable casualties, but that's what that's how it's gonna take. And this is the main objective that we have to take. There, but it's gonna take a lot more than that. I wonder if fighting those two simultaneous wars is going to just keep up the pressure. Do we know if this area is under siege? Where is that top light army? They were just here. Oh, stop. Huh? Is there a disease here? Oh, camp fever. Came from shore. I think it would be better to engage them. Don't let them get together. If it does come to summer can, we gotta shut the gates, but I don't know if we can do that because I'm out there on the field. And if I shut the gates, all of our commanders would not be there. We're gonna risk our children for this. Got one of the cons. Put him on house arrest.
Yep, diseases in summer camp. All we need to do is get them to keep away from the objective. Great help of their tough light were here right now. The ruler of Constantinople has recently built a Hagia Sophia, a magnificent new cathedral for the city of Ant's desire, and will serve as a Christian cathedral for the city of the Patriarch of Constantinople. A mighty church for the mighty city, I say. Constantinos the Monster. No, no casualties. They don't have as much as they used to. But, um, when the movement's locked, engage. Or go after them right now. Don't give them time to regroup. We have the numbers. We have allied support. Winning more battles will increase the war score by a lot. It is the beginning of the battle, and my men face the enemy, ready for a fight. As I go around inspecting my troops, I happen to engage a conversation with one of my troops, a young and inexperienced squire, as this is his first battle. He is afraid, but is also anxious to prove himself, and I advise him. Listen, these nomads have been giving us hard time. Kill or be killed. Remember that. Now you're talking like a patriot. I'm sorry that the children are going to get sick because of that damn disease. Which is going to force us to... I can't shut the gates because we won't have commanders out there. It's the hard decisions that we make. Up the melee techniques or or if trick maybe the trick could fight better. Enemy reinforcements will be on their way. If they just got here. But we're still held on. Oh, that's just them. I was about to say, who else? 71% war score now. Okay. She's of the Hatap like thing now. Remember, when a fort is built, occupation locked down. That's how it works. Remember, the trade league appears only two built. We'll build one behind him. Tells me it's time to pay my debt to the guild. I shall pay in goods. Get another loan. Wait for it. The cries of fighting men, the splatter of red blood, the clashing of weapons enemy, I scream and shout in my dream. Unaware of my surroundings, who is my friend and who is my enemy, swinging my sword without regard, lost in my battle rage and hellish terror that is battle. Die! Die! That's what I say. One more major battle, 
and if we win that, then uh, we shall have peace. Hopefully. Unfortunately, a lot of people are going to get sick. Risking the lives of my children and grandchildren. I'll educate you. If you survive. He secluded himself. Oh, does that mean the uh, war's over? No. Still ongoing for them. Well, we're giving them a beating. So we hope we're doing a lot of good. Let them work at their own pace. I think it would be better to occupy the area. It'll jump up the war score as it jumps up monthly. It's almost over. But this... But occupying this one, with this capital of the clan, we'll be adding a lot more to it. 93%. 100. There you go. We did it, but the question is, was it worth it? Sure. Now we have to march all the way home. But now it is time to proclaim Sogdiana after this bloody, bloody unification war. Reclaim Sogdiana from these foreign invaders. There you go. Great Exit Vakuman of Samarkand, hero, vanquisher, liberator, conqueror, mighty among all men, have proclaimed the kingdom of Sogdiana driving out the, the barbaric warlords and invaders who dominated the Sogdian homeland. We, you have proven that we Sogdians are not just cowards only good at commerce. We too have a martial spirit. Sogdiana prevails. And now we could finally start making some real profits again. So instead of the fearless, I will be known as the Liberator. And uh, the duchies of Fergana and Sogdiana uh, will become new digital leech titles to the kingdom of Sogdiana. Here it is. The triumph of the merchant race. Once the Silk Road began to decline, the Sogdians, who once dominated, began to decline as well. Countless waves of invaders raging from the Turks to the Arab Muslims trampled over the once prosperous cities of Samarkand, Bukhara, and others. However, the great and accomplished Vakuman made a name for himself by uniting many of the Sogdian principalities and cities under the kingdom of Sogdiana. Now that Sogdiana is under a centralized, stable leadership, it is likely that the Sogdian peoples might be able to reclaim their former glory, and not just in commercial matters, but in military matters as well. And now it's time for us Sogdians to make some money! We got a long way home. Do study with that land there. I wish I would grant you land, but they have you in prison. Oh, and also shut the gates. Yeah, we're not allowed to hold a sog damn fair because of an epidemic out there not an epidemic no no no. you're although that word is often used these days today in real life but no no no. you got it right epidemic you're thinking pandemic there's a big difference so this is it 
Have a look here. It is the Hanite of Sogdiana. We've united Sogdiana. It was a long and bloody affair. But we still use the elective system. The condition for my smug robbers brought a change, which means also a change of income source provides me. There's a large profit to be done from this, so the smug operation has increased. Gotta make fortune somehow. It's still going to be my son for now, but it could be Fridun, which has a good sick. You may not have the diplomacy skill, but... Well, actually, this is due to, um... You know, secluded... In, um... With courtiers, so... What's the base? Base is four. I'll be alright. I may vote for Fridun instead of my son here. At least he'll be a young man, and a military man. And when this uh, disease blows over, then, um... Oh dear. Help her any way you can. You could get rid of the mercenaries. Take up a lot of money. The peasants in Ramel are becoming convinced that the Jews are behind a recent epidemic. And I'm under increasing pressures for, from some to condemn the Jews and from others to protect them. Oh man. Something must be done. As the days pass, oh, this again. Which I do not have the skills to get rid of my wife of depression. She also has camp fever. Don't spread it to me. The second council of Constantinople. The patriarchs in the east have voted that the three chapters shall be condemned. And that Christ had one energy and will. Now one must wait for the input of the west and the monophysites. Interesting. Despite the widespread condemnations of the Jews, I'm still not sure they are to blame for the recent epidemic. However, as Exhid, I need to make a decision. You could become arbitrary, which is the opposite of just. That's, con that's the switch of this other way. But that adds up a bit of intrigue, but lowers my stewardship in learning. And vast of opinion. That's it. That's what I would get. 11 gold to get rid of the civil unrest so we could start making more money again. <sighs> well, I am no longer a just man. And stewardship level is good enough. To, because I had to get up to organize a smuggler operation. Heck, it's open knowledge that we have a smuggler operation here, so I might as well. So I'll just say, fine, the Jews did this. Expel them. Even though there's no Jewish characters in the realm. Just only the moneylenders, so now I can't repay them. But it was necessary. So I've decided to expel all Jews from my realm. After my guards round up the round the jewelry up, they are forced to depart in yet another large exodus for lands more friendly to their kind. They're allowed to keep many of their belongings, but I confiscate as much of their gold. Which isn't much. Because, you know, I don't know. Maybe they gave all that wealth away or whatnot on these fairs. But hey, at least the intrigue is back to normal.
Our nationality is Sogdian now. There goes my cartographer. Pagana's got a tannery, while well, there's another flax field up here. Interesting. Ah, uh, uh, Feridun. Uh, spends all day playing in the dirt and never seems to care about his own looks. Not even during formal occasions. What a proper deco would be expected from a boy of his stature. I should focus on him teaching bravery. Which, unfortunately, he's become uncouth. Brave would have been very good, but it's not to be. Later, the migrants given us more knowledge. This one for skirmish techniques. Alright, now you can disband. It's gonna take a long time for the military to recover. Because we took a beating from the enemy. But it appears you've been saved. And now, you're defending the Sumbil Horde from the Paratan. Indo-Parthians. But I cannot say that their Teflite influence is weakening. I mean, once their ruler dies and is taken over by this child who's left-handed, we can't ensure the uh, stability and security of our new Sogdian realm. <laughs> Either that, and since we're used to being watched over by an overlord, you might as well just swear fealty to the head Teflite. And if we ever happen to borrow with the Sassanids, if they care about Eastern advances, I might even join them too. And I didn't know they had the same name. But. Eek. I don't think there is going to be much of a Sassanid dynasty at all. If he were to die. And he is vulnerable. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to screw that up. Don't you know who they are? Unfortunately, this disease is localized. So we can't do anything about it. All we could do now is just sit there, make money. There goes another grandson. Yeah, I'll get personally involved for once. Just get more than the phone. Situation between a migrant community in Kota and a local population passed through a period of deep mistrust. The state's decreases stability in the province. So let's organize a great communal meeting to improve the situation. I'll spend little money because we know we follow the policy of integration, but. It may or may not have a restless promise. Nope, no restlessness. You'll be the new physician. Even though you're not going to do much since you're outside of our walls. Centralization. While outside one day, which I really shouldn't be outside during this time, enjoying the unusually pleasant weather, I've come across a small pond surrounded by large boulders. On those racks happen to be large layers of moss, enough it seemed for a good nap. Take a nap, admire the scenery, relax a bit. I hope nobody noticed that I just went outside walking. I ordered my wife to meet me in a private study evening. Hours upon hours, I spent speaking at length about the pogs that pregnant of mine. 
No, it was difficult, but I managed to restore some semblance of calm in her mind. Okay, she's no longer um, depressed, but get well soon. Because camp fever ain't nothing to mess with, like it what did in my concubine. And this was her last message. She dragged her unfaithful spouse before me and says I should punish him. Become dull? No! Also, he's no longer my heir anymore, so he'll be locked in the stock again. The disease is starting to go away now. We may open the gates very soon. And I know what's the first thing we're going to do. Open the gates. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to hold the Terma Fair, which is defective goods uh, that can be sold in the name of good fun. Gotta do something with that money. Again, you are uncouth, but. He could potentially become kind, content, or trusting. That'll help up with the diplomacy. And a uh, willful. Even if he didn't become brave the first time, well, here's a second chance, possibly. Ambitious would be a lot better. And stubborn is, is alright. So the term affair. In two months' time. It, uh, by those two months, the disease will be gone by then. First fair in the United States of Sogdiana. Svobod Artevan has spent many weeks bent over the ancient tomes and scrolls in the search for, for more information regarding the rumored artifact. He claims to be on the right path, but apparently the progress is slow. Artevan asked me to order the best scholars in Sogdiana to aid him in his efforts. The brightest mind shall be at your disposal even though there's hardly any technology to spread with to begin with. At least the prosperity didn't go... Oh, actually, we did have a deep population, unfortunately. I did not do this. We kicked the Jews out, and the people killed cats! Well, to be fair, the more pious Zoroastrians think that cats are evil, and that because they're creations of Angra Mainu. Mostly because of a mistrust of cats. Again, that was this superstitious thinking of a common Zoroastrian at that time. But keep in mind, we're Kur Mazda, it's Sogdian Zoroastrianism. But nonetheless, the silk must flow. <laughs> we need to start making money again. We just had a deep population, unfortunately. As we never had a hospital in this country. Oh no! I bought this defective product like, on a whim and now I can't return it. At the Terma Fair, that's what was supposed to happen. People buy and sell defective products for fun. But I realize I really don't have the use of this anywhere. Uh, perhaps I could trick someone else into buying this. There's a... Small chance, I mean, there's a small chance of me lose a bit of gold, small to 50% chance of lose a bit of prestige, which makes a little difference. I could get intrigue, or stewardship, or diplomacy, as I will trick someone to do my fair. I get more diplomacy regardless. Oh, a year. Picked up intrigue. I did not spend any money for it. Okay, food time. Just to get the marshal up faster reinforcement. How about some spicy lamb curry? Oh, what a poor fool uh, Bakhmuwa was. He bought a defective product of TMF while realizing first. Now he regrets it. Well, I didn't know children could participate in affairs too. Heck, it's for everybody. Uh, 
Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages are allowed to take part in Sogdan fairs. If they got the money. Which you didn't even have one to begin with. Maybe you just borrowed somebody's allowance and then uh, you'll be like, well, here goes all that money. A Chinese and Sogdian man have come to me to dispute during the fair. The former claims that the latter sold him. A slave girl claiming she was born a slave and not a freed person forced into slavery. But the girl turned out to be the latter, which is illegal in China. I think so he can't bring her home with him. The Sogdian, though, says he's never lied and told the truth from the start. Oh boy. Let me take a drink before I make my decision. Hmm. Could become just an either way, with, or just don't support either, which I would just become content and slothful. But it's only one of these. Or just say, um, neither. Hmm. Just say this is here not fair. But, um, uh, I gotta support my, um, uh, people here. I'll support the Sogdian merchant in this dispute. The Chinese merchant should have been more careful with his purchase, though the Sogdian merchant may have been crafty. It is the fault of the buyer for not expecting the goods better. Didn't get the chest trade again. There are some Persian rugs on sale this fair, and I'm considering buying some to decorate my palace. Should be of work, yes. Bought some Persian rugs, just to up the intrigue a bit more. Once again. Now the fair is over. In the future we will fight the- oh my goodness. I'm gonna need a lot of prestige to start a forced vassalization war or alternatively um start a border dispute war which will cost us a lot of money and piety for this as it's an unjust war and of course a lot of money required to start such a war and then i would have another county under my personal control When's your birthday? 15th. And if we want to keep Valasagun, we need to save up money for building a castle or a temple. We don't have a domain overseer anymore? Damn. Oh, you'll definitely do. Keep forgetting about the warehouse, but... We need to have that castle built. You know what? Give me all loans. Yo, you already got as much out of it as you could. I'll probably have to extort subjects again. Tyrannical thing to do. That's triple taxation and that's no good. I'll probably a few short, a few gold short. Yep. Now go to the market and sell whatever. Nah, I ain't falling for that. I'm here to sell. I got lots of linen. Damn. Can't sell it. They're not buying the day. Well, just raise a bit of money. While carrying out duties for the Great Trade League, I've met Pelar Gasparu. On several occasions, these encounters have never ended well. One would be hard pressed to find more unsympathetic character. I suspect he's spreading lies behind my back to damage my reputation. We're rivals now. 
this man who is a African romance, a Latin. Again, I need that castle built so we can keep the territory so it doesn't fall back to enemy hands. And I subsequently get this land and that land. I just saw him become lustful. It seems he's no longer depressed. I'll pay in goods. There you go, here's another loan. <laughs> I'll pay them all back in, in goods. I'm not paying them money. It'll be done on two years time. We see we can go faster. Send us to it. Instead it'll be done on next April. Good enough. So hopefully that'll secure. Now all you need to do next time, well actually Try to sell it again. Try to sell wool. There you are. Now sail 200 gold and fight aboard a dispute war. To fight against them. So I can have personal control over this area. So, so yeah, I think we've pretty much uh, secured Sogdiana. At the most part. But we need two more areas. And I just accidentally bit my tongue. Anyways, um... So all we need to do is get these two areas. And then the entirety of the Sogdian culture areas will be united under us. Despite the fact that I've done a lot of tyrannical things, but... When he becomes the next, um, exit of Sogdiana... We hope he will be just in his affairs. If there's anything that needs to be improved upon, he'll manage. One would hope. But I can't guarantee it. And so we'll cut this episode short here. As it's been a pretty uh, eventful episode for the unification of uh, Sogdiana. But the final unification is actually going to be taken for Ursana and Chat. And then once our overlord passes away, knowing he'll outlive me, and uh, that Sogdana will be a free country, and to decide whether or not should we rejoin that Teflite as a vassal under their empire, which I feel kind of content with it, despite the fact that he never ever liked us because he he's zealous, and he knows that I've uh, robbed some graves, which was not a nice thing. Yeah, I'm not a nice man, but I liberated the country and I saw what's best for the people. Also, if you happen to turn 16 and if I'm still around, I'm going to make you the new apprentice trader. Because I'd like to see you do well in business too. Because it's Sogdian tradition. Now we hope you people join us back in the next episode to continue this set tradition as a united Sogdian state, and, uh, and subsequently debating whether or not we should rejoin our Teflites, or just, I mean, again, remaining independence isn't going to do good, because the nomads will strike back, as they're on a defense here, at least a little bit. So they're on a the defense. And I would, and I would most definitely feel secure to be, you know, to be under them as an empire, because they got lots of land, good prosperity, and all that. And if things don't go their way, then I'll get ourselves independent. And if the Sassanids were to advance on them, then I would join them. You got to be an opportunistic, and that's how Sogdians were. They were an opportun, they were industrious, they are. A proud merchant race and uh, they're no longer cowards they know how to fight militarily 
because back in ancient times, during the time of Alexander's conquest, the Sogdians were a fierce, independent-minded people. Similar to, you know, like the Tamils down in South India. They had a similar attitude. Or even, well, their culture doesn't exist yet. Well, even the Bosnians, you could compare them to that. At least, my version of them, in many of my playthroughs with them. So do not worry, this series is not over yet. It will continue. And we hope you join us in the next episode to continue on this, uh, the days of Sogdian tradition, of business, and defending our newly uh, united borders. And then subsequently t taking this line over and vassalizing them the next. Until then, so long for now.